Hi. I don't really know what exactly to title this video, but I want I think this is important to say. A few days ago, I made a video, a really short short video under shorts, not the lunch break one. The lunch break one was like just a little quick one, but like a little short video that was titled Fear is Worship. And I say this with a testimony story so i'm gonna share it right now okay i guess it's a testimony and also a little bit about my past and this period like the things i've had to like go through to tell you that fear is worship okay and how a lot of churches a lot of pastors are still operating in fear okay um, and when you are operating in fear, you're operating, you're actually worshipping the very thing you fear, okay? And not to say, to just be open to everything and anything and not be discerning about what you let into your space and what you do and your actions and, like, what you partake in and all these things. Like, not to say, like, not at all telling you to not be discerning, but... When you're operating in fear, fear is an open door way to allow spirits, sin, and even yourself to to um, to come between you and God and and bring upon oppression in in your life unconsciously because you are fearful of something. So when we fear something, we put something on a pedestal. Okay, that's just a fact. Okay, I I have a story. So for my background, I think I. This is, um, I've shared this briefly before in a Twin Flame video, in a Twin Flame Deception video. YouTube is trying to take it down and, and I also think the enemy is trying to silence me about this topic and so I want to, I want to talk about it. And I'm, okay, so my background, I, before Christ, I basically have a, you know, ex-witchcraft, new age, spirituality, mysticism, background. So that was my background. So I was practicing a lot of spiritual things like spell work, energy shifting, including telekinesis, moving paper with your intention and energy or whatever, plastic straws and things of that sort, you know, kundalini yoga, sex magic, and blood magic. So these were the things that I partook in before Christ. And I was, I thought that was truth. I thought that was the truth to this world and this reality and how my soul would, would ascend, ascend to the highest level or to your fullest, highest self. And so what came with that for me, just to put long story short, was that I could, I could hear people's thoughts. I could hear, and I could hear voices of what I thought were people, were were the thoughts of other people when I walk past them or when I walk past a group of people that would be very overwhelming for me and I could feel the feelings of others you know very intensely and um and that was very intense and so and I thought those were just my psychic abilities when in actuality it's partially true how I was made I'm sensitive to these things and because i didn't have god the enemy was using my sensitivity um and my gifts to torment me to bring about anxiety and oppression and depression in my life because i've consented to these spirits by opening myself up through kundalini yoga or blood magic or sex magic and all of these things that were opening up spiritually all these demonic entities to come into my life um from there so the this is really this is this is real okay the, the, this is all super real okay this is real it exists and and before christ and even after christ i was still going through a lot of these things i was going through sleep paralysis meaning i have my i i would have my eyes open and I could see things, and I could hear things, and I could hear these demons talking to me, and I could, and I could see entities, and like, 
um, these things trying talking to me or you know mocking me and and all these experiences at night that those were a common thing that happened to me and another thing that was very that uh, another thing that happened a lot and that was before Christ was when I was sleeping we, we, we moved recently but in my previous home when I went to sleep I could feel I could feel somebody come into my bed and I could literally physically feel my bed sinking down like somebody is lying next to me when I feel like somebody is there I would look over and I could actually see like the bed sinking okay so that those were things that would happen to me. also on top of that my family was also my mother was into also spirituality chanting um new age chakras and all that those things like my whole life and so clearly it was like a generational thing and i was also just in you know on top of that i was like also into like hypnosis and and all that so um and a little bit my, about what happened spiritually in my family growing up i would there there was a spirit in the family that would make um, my family members really angry and really hostile and really violent and i was somehow always the one being physically um the victim like physically from that from that happening to my family members it was really dramatic you know and and like and with one particular family member um I could see even during the time it was demonic possession when a spirit you know possesses someone you can tell with the eyes the eyes would be really dark and the eyes would change their gaze and their eyes would look really different their body would have like a different temperature and also have a different smell okay it would stink when that would happen and I could recognize it immediately that was something that would, was happening and praise God praise King Jesus this family member has now been delivered because I prayed and prayed and prayed for protection and deliverance um, and, and for this family member she is now protected under the most high's power and authority in Jesus name thank thank God but that was a regular occurrence in my family when I growing up so it was really a lot of trauma a lot of traumatic events that happened that were very spiritual so my whole life i've been i've been kind of like having i i this was this was my life okay before christ so for me one of the biggest ways the enemy liked to to attack me was via fear okay fear before christ and fear after christ so i'm going to talk a little bit about the fear that I was crippled with after Christ, okay? Because I think that's more important. I think people in the Christian realm and in Christianity don't talk about this. And I don't hear this very often. And I also sometimes feel like a lot of sermons and a lot of pastors actually are pe perpetuating this fear among Christians to fear the devil more than God, to fear evil more than God, to fear oppression more than God, to fear sin more than God, to fear themselves more than God. You're doing all you're doing, seriously guys, spiritually, all you're doing is you're feeding that thing. Whatever you fear, you are feeding an energy, okay? Whatever you fear, you're feeding them the energy they want you to fear them they want you to put them above god they want you to put their authority above god they want you to put their their ability to to um to oppress you or to 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 you know whatever above god now not to say there is no consequences and no like severity to sin or to to things you practice yes absolutely absolutely that's why i think you know you even uh, you know get rid of your tarot cards get rid of things your crystals get rid of your crystals get rid of your witchcraft books and things that are not things that are an open doorway things that could pot potentially be an open door doorway like get rid of it for sure please you know but also like don't do it out from 
place of fear, you know, do it from a place of do it from a place of repentance, do it from a place of like of renouncing your connection and anything affiliated to to the you know false religion false light and everything like from a place of repentance but never never do it never do it from a place of fear okay guys i again i did like a video about worry and how your eyes um whatever you worry you worship so this video is whatever you fear you worship okay this is for me okay after Christ, there was a period of time where I had to sever many relationships and also stop going to places with alcohol, stop going to places like partying, drinking, and, and, and like any of that because it was something that I was like, it was a temptation for me. You know, I had to ne I had to let go of my yoga friends because it was a temptation for me because I wanted to, I wanted God to cleanse my being and rewire my brain and renew my mind and renew my body and and i needed to give god time to do that so there is a period of time where that is needed you know detox is needed for sure and i think that's important okay but from there you do have to come out of a space of like come out of fear to not continue operating from a place of fear okay and how does that look like operating from a place of fear if you if anything you say produces condemnation shame and guilt that is from a place of fear because you are putting your sin and the devil and all these things above god's mercy and grace and compassion and love and ability to deliver you from in, in an instant his power and authority and your submission to that um power and authority requires you to not let shame guilt and condemnation come in between of that because yes god's grace abounds okay but if you have that shame guilt and condemnation in your mind that in a way covers your eyes and blinds you from god's power and authority to deliver you to to walk with you and god being patient with you to take time because detox takes time Okay, if you're struggling with a sin, it takes time. It takes time and effort, okay, to repent. Yes, you you do need to repent, but let's say you backslid. Okay, a lot of us like to look at life like this. I'm progressing, I'm progressing, I'm progressing. Oh my gosh, I backslid. I'm progressing, I'm progressing. Oh my gosh, I'm back, so I'm back to square one. When in reality, this is what happens, okay? You're going, you're going, you're going, you backslid. You're going, you're going, you're going, you backslid. But you, but you learn a new thing and you overcome again. You're not back here. You're here. So you're always progressing, you know? Okay, so I think that's all I want to say today. I think after Christ, I, I was just really fearful. And because I was so fearful, the attacks would happen again and again, trying to push me down more and more and more. But what truly delivered me was that I stopped putting these spirits, putting these experiences, putting these attacks above God. You as a child of God, you need to know who you are. Okay, you need to know who you are. Your willingness to repent, your willingness to renounce sin, renounce your old ways and walk in God it, it, is, is all God wants. And all the work is for God to work in you and for you to partner with God, for your willingness to partner with God. That's all it is. That's all it is. And so from there, you need to understand your relationship with God and how he sees you struggling, how he sees you in your struggles, in your backsliding, in your stumbling. Because we stumble t from time to time. We will stumble because purification and sanctification takes time. Okay, that is just a matter of it. But that does not make you a better Christian or a worse Christian. As long as you've accepted Christ and you wanna and you're partnering with God, none of these spirits you are a child of God. That's the second thing. You need to know your power as a child of God. You receiving the Holy Spirit, accepting the Holy Spirit, and 
to your life, you need to know that the one who is in you is more powerful than anything and every anything that is trying to oppress you and torment you. Okay, the one who is in you. God is not somebody who's like outside of you when you've repented and accepted Christ. Um, he has the full power and authority. You don't need to worry about a single thing. So I want to read Psalm 107 for you guys. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the lands. From east and west. From north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness, in utter darkness, prisoners, suffering in iron chains, because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For, the break, for he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. God does that. Some became fools through their rebellious ways, and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their darkness. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let them sacrifice thanks offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Some went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For, his, for he spoke and stirred, a temp, stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up the heavens. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They are at their wit's end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out in their, of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm and he guided them to their desired haven. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let them exalt him in the assembly of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. He turned rivers into a desert, flowing springs into thirsty ground, and fruitful land into salt waste because of the wickedness of those who live there. He turned the desert into pools of water and parched ground into flowing springs. There he brought the hungry to live, and they founded a city where they could settle. They sowed fields and planted vineyards that yielded a fruitful harvest. He blessed them, and their numbers greatly increased. And he did not let their herds diminish. Then their numbers decreased because they were humbled by oppression, calamity, and sorrow. He, he, who, he who pours contempt on nobles made them wander in a trackless waste. But he lifted the needy out of their affliction and increased their families like flocks. And the upright, the upright see and rejoice, but all the wicked shut their mouths. Let the one who is wise heed these things and ponder on the loving deeds 
of the Lord. God is so good. You know, I did so much in so much ignorance. And even after Christ, I had habits that I was struggling with still that God took his time to work with me because every time I run back to him and I ask him to cleanse my heart, you know, cleanse me. It's truly an unfailing love. It is an unfailing love. When you are in darkness and these oppressions or whatever god will pull you out of it you gotta have faith that god is above any of these things he's above you okay he's above you his love is above what you can do or cannot do for him he knows you've done these things he knows that you've opened these doorways but he his power and authority as you call upon his name to deliver you and pull you out of darkness and pull you out of oppression he will do it he does it. You just have to ask for it and go back to him. Ask him to reveal to you what else to do. What else can you do? What else can you do if you haven't done anything? And, and you know, and sometimes if you are in a situation where you still have idols in your home because you still like live with your parents or your family, like God still will protect you. He will deliver you. And provide you in some way. I just want to encourage whoever's still in that situation where they're still they they have come, they came from that background and they're going through those things. And they're going through those things. I just want to say that like you 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 probably do have some gifts. You know, like if you are sensitive to energies or whatever, God will God will deliver you. He won't just do that but he would also show you a new life make you a new creation use you and your gifts and reveal to you a new path a new way a new way of using your gifts for god's glory for jesus you know and i just want to encourage that and that takes time that absolutely takes time it is absolutely not overnight and just be kind to yourself why are you so why do you feel so rushed why are you rushing to get to the, to the other side right take your time god is taking his time god is not in a rush god is not in a rush letting go fear letting go the fear of darkness is definitely the first step is that is what keeps you in bondage okay fear is what keeps you in bondage fear is what feeds the energies of these demons these um spirits and you're still giving them attention you know Take your attention away from them. Have your mind set on who God is. Learn about who he is. And that takes time too, you know. It takes time to, you know, a relationship with God is like a relationship with anybody. You know, you take time to get to know a friend. When you've just met somebody, you've probably had pre-misconceptions and ideas of who this person is, right? That you've heard from other people, from hearsay, from people that you've had to shed and take your time to be like, this guy is pretty nice. He's not this snobbish dude that everybody is saying he is. It's the same thing with God. We come into Christianity with all of this pre-misconception of who, who God is. You know, and, and the fact of the matter is, you're not going to be able to read this whole thing overnight. You know, it takes time. It takes time to get to know somebody. And consistency, you know, meeting him every day, meeting, talk to him, talking to him every day and asking him to reveal to him, reveal himself to you every day. And it's little by little and by eating the word and digesting God, what God has said about himself and seeing how that plays out in your life, you know, and that takes time. And I think it's, there is grace for people who have fed into fear and all that, but you do have to shed fear, okay? Because fear is worship and whatever you fear that is not God, you know, and that does not mean to be ignorant and continue to do whatever you are doing because God says we perish from lack of knowledge, right? So... It's a balance. You need to know what you need to know, but also 
not fear the wrong things, you know? You don't want to put them on a pedestal. Fear you fear your boss because you you know he pays you and he's clearly you put him on a pedestal and you're scared what he will do to you in your life and and so whatever you fear you put on a pedestal and so fear the Lord fear the Lord in a way that it's like fear the Lord fear the Lord for sure but also know his character that he. He is love and he is patient and he is kind and he holds no records of wrongs and he is love. Okay, God is love. Um, so that is what it is. So I hope that helped. That is maybe, I think this is really important for those who just came out of New Age and is operating in just like fight and flight mode, anxiety mode um god's got you okay you can chill you can relax let your nervous system l just calm down okay but as a child of god walk in authority okay you're good walk in authority he who is in you is bigger than everything anything else okay love you guys